Welcome back everyone. As you can see the portfolio is back up nicely from last video. If you hold companies you believe in and have done your own due diligence, there is nothing to worry about. I'm happy when my stocks go down, that means I can buy them for a cheaper price. We are investing for the long term, short term noise will always be there. In this video I show you how I do my due diligence on the stock Daco New Energy. First thing you need to know before buying a stock is what your company does. Daco New Energy is a Chinese company which is a leading manufacturer of high purity polysilicon for the global solar PV industry. They sell polysilicon to photovoltaic product manufacturers who further process it into ingots, uh, wafers, cells and modules for solar power solutions. With this information we can already do some research on what analysts predict for the future of the solar industry. In this image we can see that there is still a lot of growth left in the solar space and that they expect annual growth of 9% till 2050. One of the leaders in this, in this space will be Asia. Our company is based in China so this is already very good news which will definitely benefit our stock in the long term. Let's now check out if we are already paying for this growth when we buy this company or if the stock is still undervalued. The company has a current PE ratio of 11 and a forward PE of 6. Normally we want this below 20, but for growth companies we might want to pay for some growth. Below the PE ratio we have a PEG ratio, this means with growth included. The PEG of a company is below 1, it indicates that the company is undervalued. Daco New Energy has a PEG of 0.02, which is crazy. I don't think you will find many companies with such a good PEG. The price to cash flow of the company is also very good. A high amount of cash flow means that they can put a lot of money back into the business. All of the valuation metrics are below the sector median, so this is a very good start. Next up is growth. These numbers are unbelievable. Daco is rapidly growing and outpacing the sector median at an incredible rate. Even the 5 year average revenue growth is almost 3 times higher than the sector median. But we are not finished yet. How profitable is Daco? Let's say very profitable. If we compare the numbers with the 5 year average, we can see that DACO is getting more and more profitable. So far, so good. On the 18th of August, DACO reported earnings. In here, the management team wrote some remarks about the latest quarter. They had an excellent quarter with strong revenue growth and better than expected profitability. DACO achieved record high production volume gross profit and net income. The company is addressing the climate challenge to reach carbon neutrality and the market conditions remain strong for the polysilicon sector. The strong increase in downstream demand has led to a shortage of polysilicon and caused the average selling, selling price to rise significantly. It's almost double from last quarter, which means means they almost made double as much money on it. They also expect the strong price momentum to continue in the second half of the year. So we might see some more good numbers in the next earnings to come. The management team expects the constrained polysilicon supply to be the main limiting factor to the size of the global solar market this year. Polysilicon production is a complex chemical process is the highest barrier to entry in the solar value chain. This is a good sign for a stock that the demand is very high and that companies are struggling to find polysilicon elsewhere. The entry point in this business seems to be very high, which means that DACO does not have a lot of competitors. More countries are looking for carbon neutrality. The government of China is also pushing for green energy and they want solar projects on local levels, which can be another catalyst for DACO. So the main thing we need to look for is if DACO can increase their production capacity fast enough. I really like the fact that the company is actively working on ESG efforts 
This stands for Environmental, Social and Governance or Sustainability. Recently, a subsidiary of DACO made an IPO on the Shanghai uh, Stock Exchange. They did this to provide additional capital for its future growth plans. DACO owns around 80% of the shares of its subsidiary. I've been following this IPO and saw the company is now worth $24 billion. 80% of $24 billion is around $19 billion that DACO owns in shares. You need to imagine that DACO is only worth uh, $4.5 billion. Here you, here you can see how much the Chinese are patting on green energy and how undervalued this stock is. DACO set up a roadmap to grow the capacity production 50% every year over the next 3 years. So a lot of growth is ahead for this company. From the last years we can see that they are increasing their capacity year over year. For the production in 2021 they expect 85 megaton. This answers the question of before if they are increasing their production capacity and yes it is. The cash cost for making a kilogram polysilicon is also decreasing, which gives the company more free cash to reinvest. DACO is highly profitable because the average selling price is increasing a lot along with the sales volume. In the latest earnings report, DACO revenue grew by at least 72% in one quarter. This is mostly the effect of the average selling price increasing. A gross margin of 68 is very high. You need to keep an eye on this because if the average selling price goes down again, the gross margin and the revenue might plummet too. DACO has an EBITDA margin of 70, which means the company is highly profitable. It is not often that a, that a company is growing this fast and making a lot of money. Most companies sacrifice earnings for growth. The balance sheet of DACO looks very interesting. DACO is gaining more cash and is paying off borrowings. They can do this because they are earning a lot of money, so this is good. The total assets are also way higher than the liabilities. This is what we want to see. Advances from customers is increasing rapidly. You might think this is a bad thing because it is under liabilities. It also uh, makes it look like the liabilities are increasing while they are paying off debt. But it is actually a good sign for a company. In this section, all payments are stored from customers for goods or services that have not yet been delivered. Once the related goods or services have been delivered, the amount in this account is shifted to a revenue account. You can see this as a pre-order of goods. The demand is increasing so heavily that companies want to pre-order to make sure they get what they need first. When you see all this, you are probably questioning why the valuation of the stock is so low. There is some bad sentiment around the company at the moment. In my opinion, these are only for the short term, but you should consider them before investing in DACO. This company is Chinese, and the company was caught up in the massive Chinese stock sell-off. China is regulating companies more strictly and want to protect the data of consumers. Some companies need to pay fines, but if we look elsewhere we see a lot of countries are doing the same. So I'm not really afraid of these changes and I think it might even benefit Chinese companies in the longer term. Next to this, some investors worry about the valuation gap of the US shares and the Asia shares. Uh, investors worry about uh, that DACO is not interested in, anymore in the US stock market, since in Asia the IPO is doing so well. The CEO said they are currently not interested in the privatization of the US shares. They want US shareholders to enjoy the returns. The CEO even mentioned the possibility to pay out dividends or do buybacks. Uh, buybacks would mean uh, people invested on more of the company and the intrinsic value of your shares will increase. So this is very good news. I expect hedge funds or retail investors soon to notice how undervalued this company is. This will also closer the gap with the valuation in Asia. I bought a lot of this stock lately. Under $60 I have been happily buying the dip. 
Now it's already up 23%, but I expect this to keep trending up from now. This was everything for today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section or send me an email. Have a good day and see you next week.